Time now for Media Watch on France 24. Emma James joins me now. Good evening to you, Emma. You've been looking at reaction in Kenya to some uh, rather, uh, let's say, inflammatory comments on uh, on an international broadcaster, which have led to a new hashtag, which is someone tell CNN. Tell us a little bit more about this. <laughs> It is one of those stories where, as a journalist, you do feel a little bit there, but for the grace of God, go I. And it does make you a little bit nervous. But basically, um, it would seem that the entire world is criticising CNN right now. The Independent uh, tweets that Kenyans are ridiculing the US network on Twitter for its hotbed of terror report. And if we take a look at this image here, um, you actually see this is what was being broadcast on air. And the strap at the bottom of the screen reads, security fears as Obama heads to terror hotbed. And it's those two words that people in Kenya are objecting to. They say that they are the victims of terror, not the place where terror is actually breeding because, of course, the Al-Shabaab militants, which is what's being talked about here, are based in Somalia, just over the border. Now, CNN has actually obviously realised that some of the criticism is at least valid because they have changed the headline on their website for the report that actually this relates to. Obama's trip raises security concerns, they now say. But if you scroll down, you look at the opening lines from this piece by Barbara Starr, and it says President Barack Obama is not just heading to his father's homeland, but to a region that's a hotbed of terror. So they really haven't entirely stepped away from the use of that phrase. The Washington Post, among those reporting that Kenyans are ridiculing CNN online, they say rather... Uh, I suppose perhaps kindly, in the global news game, it's easy to make overstatements. Other people are being less forgiving about this one. The Global Post says, Barack Obama is visiting Kenya, his father's birth nation. And the question on everyone's mind, if by everyone you mean CNN, is whether he'll make it out alive. You see, according to the self-proclaimed most trusted name in news, Kenya is a hotbed of terror. Mm, it reminds me of those times after the Paris attacks when people were saying certain districts of Paris were hotbeds of terror. And in fact, uh, we would never exactly. uh, no uh, go have thought zones. of them as such. Exactly. No-go zones, they were called. Um, what sort of a response are you seeing to all of this then on, on social media? Well, the interesting thing is it's actually quite heartwarming because often when there's a backlash on social media because of the anonymity it affords people, people can become very aggressive, very unpleasant, and a lot of what they have to say they wouldn't necessarily say to anyone's face. Um, but what we see with these tweets is a lot of pride in people's um, own identity and, and a lot of pride in their country. And this particular one um, is a, a quote from a Nigerian novelist, Chinua Achebe. Uh, Until lions have their own historians, history of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Others are drawing parallels with the United States, saying if your country is a cool bed of peace as opposed to a hot bed of terror, why is it necessary to guard the president this way in your streets? It's a valid question to be asked. This Twitter user is talking about the fact that yesterday they were calling Kenya a hotbed. Is this peace? And of course, that's an image there from the latest mass shooting in the United States, that cinema shooting, which saw two people killed and the gunman himself. So a lot of people drawing comparisons. This one, I don't need to look too hard to spot the hotbed of terror because this graph shows the gun-related murder rates in the developed world. And yes, you've guessed it, on the right-hand side in the red, far higher than everyone else is the United States. Um, now, the Kenyan interior minister has actually called on CNN to apologise. So far, there's been no apology made. But it would appear that Kenyans are making the best of this, because if we look at this uh, report from Capital FM, which is a Kenyan radio station, they say that um, Kenyans are using the hashtag someone tell CNN uh, to actually showcase the brand of Kenya, if you like. And people are really talking about what it means to them to be Kenyan, what they're proud of, what Kenya means to them. And you're getting images like this uh, amazing lion. Um, someone tell CNN that this is magical Kenya. Um, wildlife featuring very widely in these kind of images and also cityscapes as well to show that it isn't just the aftermath of terror attacks that you see in Kenya. There's also a great deal of beauty there too. There's also obviously a lot of humour. Kenyans won't give up. I'm still waiting for the CNN apology, says this Twitter user. And my favourite cartoon from the Daily Nation, which is a Kenyan newspaper, um, someone tells CNN, CNN, the error hotbed. <laughs>
Makes me want to go to Kenya, actually, looking at those pictures you just showed there. Um, and some comment, comments coming from far and wide, as we can see. One of them that you, you've picked out for us has come from none other than a former anchor on, on CNN. And interesting because she herself uh, was born and brought up in Kenya. Yes, yeah, she says, Zane Vergy, this is, um, she says her family has a 100-year history in, in Kenya, and so she feels very strongly that, that this is unfair. She said she rolled her eyes when she saw the term that was being used by CNN. Um, and she says that a lot of Kenyans are very unhappy about it. However, she also goes on to defend CNN in some way, saying words like hotbed catch the viewer's eye and drive up ratings. It's the American TV business, not just about Kenya. Africa is still perceived by the majority of US writers and producers as a dangerous place, that it's all pretty much the same. Now, as defences go, it's not the strongest one of CNN's editorial policy on this. Um, she also goes on to then do exactly the same thing to other countries that she complains has happened to Kenya. She labels Iraq, Afghanistan and Libya as being, well, those are the kind of countries that we're talking about being hotbeds of terror. Now, there is an element of terror breeding ground, but if we're talking about the generalization and her problem with that, she's just done exactly the same thing. Interestingly, CNN, um, it's pointed out by Nairobi News, it's not the first time that CNN have got things wrong when reporting Africa. Um, lots of errors in terms of maps. Um, they, it would appear they're a little um, lacking when it comes to knowledge of geography. Um, they put that Nairobi is in Nigeria, for example. Um, but the worst one is where they actually paid actors to pretend to be militants who were arming themselves ahead of the threat of post-election violence in 2013. So that's really the worst thing we've seen. But to end on a lighter note, little bit risque, this one. Hope you're not too uh, sensitive to these things. Someone tells CNN that the last time a Kenyan made a bed hot in Hawaii, it produced, it, it produced a president of the United States. OK, well, I'm going to avoid the words hot and bed, I think, for the next few weeks. I think in any kind of story that I'm covering, hotbed is, is a, is a no-go word for me Definitely. from now on. Thank you very much, Emma James, there, with today's edition of Media Watch.